today's featured knife lab artist is Eugene Kwan. Eugene Kwan, he's a human male to watch. He makes films about knives. Eugene Kwan is not just a car seat with a camera mounted to the headrest and a scary pair of human arms. Any claims to the contrary have been grossly exaggerated. He is definitely a human and he does human things like walking on his hind legs and breathing through his human openings and taking in his surroundings using the receptors that humans have. He is not a time traveler here to gain the stock market for benefit of the future grey economy. All reports that said that were filthy lies. He definitely is made up of all human parts and was not constructed in a laboratory. Eugene Kwan, telling it like it is and like it will be, because he is from the future, your future of multimedia enjoyment. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of The Knife Lab. So, my knife testing. All sorts of variables and I really don't deny that there is. These mule videos are really good because they remove a couple at least. As in, every knife I am testing is the same model and they are virtually the same. There are some minute differences because often these are made in different parts of the world, usually where the steel is sourced from, you find. Um, but it does help remove some variables. So what am I doing today? I am testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different steels all in the same knife platform and these range from relatively low, low cost um, you know, non-powdered steels to high vanadium, very sort of premium um, powdered steels. So we're going to break down the numbers. I'm going to show you all the tests. They're going to be sped up at like eight times speed. So otherwise it's like watching paint dry. But we're going to show you full form testing. The way the test goes is I take a knife. I put a 0.1 micron polished edge on it. And I did all the knives at once. And I did to my eyeball the best most equal job I could do on every edge. They're all the same edge angle, 17 degrees per side, all with the point micron, 0.1 micron edge, all using the same system and strops and everything. So that's something. Then what I do is I get this twisted sisal rope, grunt brand twisted sisal rope, 10 millimeters, and I buy a whole bunch of this stuff. So I bought, I think, nine hanks of this stuff for these tests. Um, and that is where, again, I thank the Patreons very much because these videos are much less guilt-ridden given that a lot of this stuff is assisted by Patreon patrons. So thank you, guys. I'm not the best Patreon. I don't have all the cool super-secret stuff on there, but it really does contribute to these fun little videos here. But I'm digressing. Get that door. You're playing on me. So I cut the twisted sisal rope until with the same portion of the blade and I try and use the same kind of cut so a cut from about that portion onwards nice little whoop, cut through very repetitive process until a knife no longer slices a sheet of paper but I'm testing the sheet of paper where the cutting was taking place so until the knife no longer goes like that through the paper until the knife starts to and this is one that should do it because I've just been testing with it it should stop and bind and tear at about the point that was being used. So it's noticeable to me and it's where the test stops. There's a degree of trust in this, for sure. You have to be like, oh yeah, he doesn't have a super vendetta against, I don't know, a steel that does badly and he does not he's not secretly being paid by Hitachi to say that ZDP is the best. You know, obviously. But for what it's worth, I am just a guy in Australia, in my shed, with a bad case of curiosity. So that's that too. So I try and keep things as even as I can, but just to get ahead of the stuff that people often say when they haven't sort of watched several of my videos about these tests where I kind of debunk myself. Um, yes, uh, I can't be sure what's doing the edge abrading the most. So whether it is the knife going through the rope or the rope impacting the chopping board. That is also why I've kept the same chopping board, even though it's been broken in half, it used to be twice as big. Kept the same chopping board for the entire time I've been doing these tests, just in case it is that. So everything is as same as I can get it, all right? I chose twisted sisal rope because it is a natural material. It's not like not filling the world with nasty paracord shards um, that are made of plastic. This stuff still is a little bit gnarly. It does compost, but for the record, it, I can't make fire starters with it. It just doesn't hold a flame. Don't know why, but it doesn't. I've tried it. 
So there's that too. So it's another thing people ask or comment on. And yeah, um, it is all about how much I as a human can repeat the same thing over and over again. So there's also that. So there's, there's no doubt variants, variables that I can't control that I'm not even aware of. But that being said, I've tried my best to show you the differences between these 10 steels in the same knife platform. I'm going to go through them alphabetically. I'll give you a brief blurb about each one before the test is shown. And then at the end, we'll do results and analysis. So this is a knife nerd's dream, or a knife still nerd's dream. Well, it was for me. Thank you very much to Dave. Now, Dave sends me these mules. He bought all these mules. They're not my mules. He sent them across to me, and he'll then get them uh, heat treated, test, heat treatment tested, sorry, no, Rockwell tested, uh, in an even sort of nerdier further layer to this stuff. So um, you can see all the results of every test I've ever done in my spreadsheet below. And I've also previously done, I think, 14 other mules as well. So I'm going to have 24 mules done by the end of this video that we can all sort of look at and compare. So it's pretty cool. It's cool the word. It is to me. So thank you very much to Dave because he sent these across like four months ago, a long time ago. But that was right when I'd been overusing this arm here and I just simply, I couldn't do it. I could barely sharpen a knife. I was just so weak and I needed to take like a good long period of time off from doing anything repetitive. I did and it was a bit of a, I felt bad the whole time because I was like, I should have been doing this, you know. But in the end, I've just smashed out over the last few days, 10 of these, some of them are quite long, knife tests and still feel fine. So I guess it paid off. So thank you very much, Dave. It is, uh, Dave is the same to this channel. Uh, and he does a lot of the number recording as well, so round of applause for Dave. Anyway, let's get into it. We're going to get alphabetically and we're going to get started right now. 9 CR18 MOV. It's probably the considered the nicest out of all the alphabet kind of soup Chinese stills that you get. Uh, Civivi have used it to good effect and it will generally hold an edge noticeably better than the 8 CR13s and whatnot. COS3 is the sandwich steel inside the higher end Falcon Evens, like the Pro Series and whatnot of the survival knives. It's uh, got a good amount of uh, carbon in it and some cobalt, which makes it easy to machine and sharpen. Generally a well-regarded steel. CTS BD1 is a well-regarded budget steel. Cold Steel and SOG have started bringing this into their lower end line. It's often replacing steels such as AUS8 and 8CR13 MOV. It's got a good carbon content and is a relatively simple steel that is easy to work with and polish. CTS XHP was a lot of people's first true super steel when Cold Steel jumped from AOS 8 to XHP. It was quite a dramatic jump. It has a lot of carbon in it, and it's a relatively simple D2 variant steel apart from that. It is a micro melt steel, so it is a different process to a lot of these other steels.
CPM 20 CV is a steel with a good amount of carbon and vanadium in it. It is a sister steel to M390. M390 is often used more by European and Chinese makers, and 20 CV has been adopted by a lot of American makers, given that it is an American steel. TRM Adam, zero tolerance, bench made, lots of the fancier buck knives do sprint runs in this steel. CPM 4V has a higher carbon content than CPM 3V and its vanadium content still allows for good long lasting edges. It is still a steel designed to be tough as well as holding a decent edge. It is not a stainless steel. There is a lack of chromium in it that would make it stainless. M390, very common steel in this day and age, has replaced S35VN as most knife companies go to very nice steel. It's got high amounts of carbon, high amounts of vanadium, it's a high chromium steel as well. It does most things pretty well. S110V, a true spec beast, high amount of carbon, high, high amount of vanadium, has enough chromium in it to still stay stainless, and the cobalt and molybdenum ensures it is easy to machine, or easier. The niobium is the secret weapon of this steel, forming very hard niobium carbides that do a great job holding an edge. This is one to watch.
Super Blue is a Japanese, very pure, very simple steel with a good amount of carbon and also some tungsten. Uh, this is featured in a lot of good kitchen knives. It is not a stainless steel. The chromium amounts in it are marginal. So if you have a knife in this steel, be sure to care for it. Often it is laminated between two more highly stainless steel sheets. ZDP-189, a carbon beast. The high carbon content in this steel, paired with the chromium content, makes lots of carbon and chromium for a good long-lasting edge. And there is also enough chromium in it for it to maintain its status as a stainless steel. Rather simple steel. The tungsten and vanadium amounts in it are negligible. This is most often seen performing very well at very high hardnesses. Rockstead knives are the ambassadors of high performance ZDP 189 steel. It is also known as Cowrie X when used by other companies. All right, so going through this list of blade steels. So, BD1, cut 220 times through the rope. S110V, cut 875 times through the rope. 20CV, 650 times. 4V, 450 times. 9CR18MOV, 250 times. Super blue steel, 335 times. Laminated COS, 380 times. CTS XHP, 620 times. M390, 680 times. ZDP 189, 750 times. So, what are the outliers there? What is a bit unusual? Two of those numbers are unusual to me. So, XHP has cut higher than I thought it would given that it's nowhere near the level of complexity as M390 and it cuts 60 less than M390. And um, it is also nowhere near the complexity of um, 20 CV, which cuts 650. So the XHP performed extremely well. My boy XHP did good, son. Um, so there, that, that's a, a bit of an aberration in my opinion. It's a, it's a high result for XHP, but as I said, it's me doing it. So I'm not a robot, you know. I'm not. I'm not cut test Tron 2000. So who knows? But that's unusual. And ZDP at 750, I felt was a little less than what it could have been as well. And I believe Dave tested his as well. And I made sure I did a full sharpening back. So I removed all the steel that would have been cutting with the same edge as Dave's. And I think he said that he got a little bit less because then he tried a couple of these before he sent them. But all these are resharpened by me. So. I felt out of that ZDP was a little bit lower than it perhaps would have been. The highest steel obviously was S110V at 875, which is matching about what Max, no, not Max, uh, A11. Exact, actually, it's exactly what A11, and the, these numbers are often exact because I generally stop at 25 or 50 intervals unless the knife feels particularly like, oh, something's different on a specific cut. So, combining the two lists, from the whole series done. So we've got a, which I'll put, on the, I'll put on the screen right now. That's all the edge tests from all the mules that I've tested so far. Overall, 
what looks a bit unusual. Even still to me, I'll say it again, RWL34 is higher than I thought it would be. That's the steel the battle level of complexity is CPM154. So that to me is higher. CTS XHP is higher or the M4 is too low. One of those two. Because um, the M4 I believed would be, well, and this is just, this is perception and this is where sometimes numbers are worth more than just anecdotal, well, I thought it should have because it feels like it. Yeah, I, I don't know. At any rate, that seems a little bit unusual to me, but there you have it. And um, yeah, everything else looks more or less okay, like Maximet and K390, 110V and A11 being the top four, that really makes sense to me. All those are extreme in a particular hardening or you know edge retaining aspect. So whether it's tungsten, vanadium, or both, um, those are all very kind of advanced steels, and you feel it when you sharpen them. They're you know they they are steels for nerds. So there's that. The middle pack, which unfortunately includes ZDP, I would put that. I would have expected ZDP, and I've had better results on DDP before in the past, I believe as well. So I think I've got that over eight hundred ish before. I mean, they, and these again, these numbers are when you're looking at numbers in multiples of fifty you know, around the 800 mark, I guess it isn't a huge amount if it's 50 or 100 even different. It's only really a, a 10, 5 to 10 percent ish, isn't it? So anyway, um, the middle pack is fair. Like so ZDP, you know, slash S90 down through to like your form, your, your sorry, your um, uh, PD1. So, you know, they 700 to above 500 kind of steels. Like that's kind of upper middle steels, good stuff. The middle steels, you know, from RWL down through to like LC200N, maybe Super Blue, yeah, from Super Blue to LC200N, no, Super Blue to um, IWL, that's like a good pack, that's all pretty well regarded, just daily, you know, you won't pay too much for many of those steels, some of them are rare, like whether you're going to see B70P in anything, I don't know, but um, yeah, now, what was the other one, there was B75P, what did that one do as well, so I'm getting my old video up too. B75 pitted 325, so yeah, that's above 9CR, just a little bit. But yeah, um, so yeah, and then you're looking at, yeah, BD1 and 9CR, they're just well-known, like, decently regarded budget seals, and this is with a pretty good ed edge on them. They're still cutting a whole lot of times, which is just kind of cool anyway. So those seals, and as I always say, cutting a, cutting 100 bits of twisted sisal rope is impressive. Like, this is horrible stuff to cut. Um, especially into a wood board like I'm doing it. So none of, nothing on here is a disgraceful steel. None of it really is. It's all good. Just depends on sort of how much you value edge retention versus other attributes. So a lot of people on this, a lot of people's favorite steel on this whole list is probably 52100, 4V, M4, you know, stuff that didn't get anywhere near the top but because they've got other positive attributes about them. So it doesn't mean anything in terms of which is the best. It's just more about um, how much rope they cut on a wooden board. So, again, I'm not trying to discount what I'm doing too much, but people get very serious about it as well. And it's just not that serious. It's just kind of a... I, I see this, the way I see all this, and this is from the guy doing it. I see that it loosely breaks steels into like three, maybe four categories. The super high end, the high, like the upper high end, the comfortable, great steels minimum, and, you know, the the heart of gold budget steels, you know, that's the four it breaks into me and that's about as in-depth as I would go using a test such as this. So yeah, that's the knife lab for today. It's been like a bit of a, it's a good bit of a season finale. Uh, I'll still be doing a bit of this uh, in the future. I'm doing a bit of sharpening stuff lately as well. You seem to all be enjoying that. So that's been fun. Thank you all for watching. Thank you again to Dave and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye guys.